Hi, and welcome to Let's Plays Disco Elysium Part 49. If you're so inclined, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. And if you would be so kind, uh, go and check out the Patreon one. So, we seem to have a confession from the murderer. What more? So many ends to tie up. We are tying up all of the ends. And you are looking at Dan, the victim and a young woman having sex through the scope of your rifle that night before you shot him? The lieutenant takes out his notebook slowly, very slowly. The old man nods. Why? Because that's what they were doing. He shrugs, then smacks his lips. The motive. This is where the motive is going to come from. Oh, I've been wondering about that. You can coax it out of him. The lieutenant's preparing the ground. I don't understand. Do you, detective? I don't understand this part. Why were you looking at them that night? I'm always looking. Pervert. He cocks his head to the side, then turns his eyes to the city. Another tremor passes to his right side. Lower in intensity. Are you always looking through the scope of a rifle? I'm just trying to understand. A rifle scope has the best magnification. And if you don't like it, click. You pull the trigger? Yes. Think of it as a form of critique. He looks you straight in the eye. You've got him going. Connect every little piece now. Wrap this up like a gift. What specifically did you not like about what you saw the night of the murder? Them. Fucking. I didn't like that. He looks at the charred wood. So you were jealous? Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself. Drugged out. Soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. And I wanted to see his head explode. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second, writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But... He shrugs. You can't have everything. This man has seen past her, like you did. And now he longs to see her covered in blood. To punish her. Mm. You wanted to punish her, so you killed him. She practically breastfed that man. You wouldn't believe the things she let him do to her. He shakes his head and stares at the ashes. While he stands here and rots. Mm -hmm. You saw through her, so did I. You're delusional. There's nothing to see in the soul of the bourgeois woman. It's the same as the surface. Sick hedonism and desperation. I don't think like that. No one gives a shit what you think. You and your cronies kill ten working class men a day. I've heard the statistics on Channel 8. How long have you been watching her? Since she came to Martinez. I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning, behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then. Just a spot in the night, moving. Past the fell building on the coast? What was she doing there? Hiding something in the water. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her, smoking. 
She was nervous, but not scared. What do you think she hid there? Her passport and tickets to Villiers. <coughs> and from there to Cachet Bru. In the free state of Seminine, hidden away at the edge of the earth, near the pale. This is the hidden boy she told us about. You looked into it? After she was gone. He nods. Did you keep what was in it? When we found the submersible, it was empty. No. Why would I do that? I didn't need tickets to Villiers. I'd put them back. If I wanted to extort someone, I'd do better. This implies that he's thought about extorting her. Also, a little inconsistency here. He was surprised to hear her name, Clasia, before. Would he not have mm. seen it on the documents? He saw her name on the passport, but when I said her name, Clasia, you seem not to recognise it. It didn't say Clasia in there. What did it say? Her name? What was in the passport? Uh, it was something. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. It was dark that morning. I only remember her face on the photo. Are you sure you didn't keep the documents? We checked the submersible and there was nothing there. Why would I need that trash? I'm not going to Villiers. He looks to the reeds, confused. Moving on, did you continue watching her after this? I did. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks. And a body hard and lean and bruised all over. Black and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. I could see who she was, too. He a spook. On the run. Revachol's the cloaker of capital now. All the bagmen and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. You could tell she was a spook from the documents? She had different color hair on the photo and glasses. Forged. Some sordid bourgeois affair. I heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He's setting it up for you. The bruises. You can't make that out in a scope. And you could see her bruises through the scope of a rifle. You can't see bruises through a scope. It's just a blur. How does he know those minute details about her body? It quickly comes to you. The bruises on her body, any chance you've seen them through a hole in the wall? Oh, yes. Cutting those drugs of hers into little lines with a knife. Masturbating. Did you make that hole? With a clip point knife. Good for listening in, too. For hearing the moaning and the snorts. Ever see her through a window on a roof? Like that, too. Yes. Bending like a bow against the glass. You've been through those secret... The secret route behind the Worthing in rags. Those were your footprints there. You just changed your shoes. I've been through all of Martinez. Every nook and cranny. And that too. Yes, that too. The things they did in that little room. What she'd do to feel good. Funny the way light works. You turn it on inside, and it gets so dark out, you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the twenties, when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do some shit, but... He keeps shaking his head. Those two took the cake. You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. A quick glance at you. One more loose end down. We're doing this, detective. How did you get in there, the hidden pinball workshop? I can just walk in there now after a good wash. I told you, they think I'm an antisocial. Closing hour is a good time. The kitchen's empty. You had to open the steel door in the kitchen? How? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois gay merchant lived there. I don't know, 15 years ago? He left spare keys all over. And I took one. Then I saw her turn the light on one night in my scope. He points towards the whirling in rags. Andy found use for it. A spare key, like the one hanging behind the Union 
box window. You had feelings for that woman. There's... There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's, it's not enough. The coals of his eyes glisten suddenly, like stones dripping with water. Is he crying? Man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you have your eye on something there. It's weakness, I know. Is that why you left the, the dried flowers behind her window? No. He starts to shake his head again. A sunflower on a withered stalk. Why then? I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying, like a child, in the corner of her room on the floor, like she does sometimes. When was this? The day after I killed him. And you brought her Maybells? Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. He looks at the charred logs. It's as if something put the thought there to leave the flowers. Something put the thought in you. A compulsion. What do you mean, put? He raises his eyes. They're round and wide. A brief flash of terror. Just got this feeling from what you said. Do you agree? Maybe. I told you. I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. He lowers his head and stares at the logs. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. He wipes his eyes. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more. One more down. So, in conclusion, it wasn't about him, it was about her. Her. He repeats, staring at the ashes, then the reeds. There's a twitch in the corner of his eye. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. That's it. Motive. We have it. Where is she, that Clasier? I haven't seen her there for days. She got away. But she led us here first. She figured out someone was watching her from the seafront. Gone. I knew it. She kept staring into the scope this last week at the island, like she knew. He sighs. She'd look at night, crying or smoking on the roof, staring right into me. It doesn't matter. Across the water, on a dilapidated jetty in a nameless village, made of grey cinder block houses with etonite roofs, two police officers and one special consultant look across a narrow strip of sea. He's there, doing what exactly I don't know. Satellite <laughs> Officer Vic Mayer points at the ruins. Behind that anti-aircraft something. That's why we can't see him. Special Consultant Heidelstam is optimistic. We'll see the boat when he comes. Let's go get a coffee until then. I know this interesting little place where... His voice, his voice trails, trails off. off as the three walk down the jetty. As the men go, Patrol Officer Minnow looks back over her shoulder at the crumbling fortification in the snowfall, like a rotten tooth rising out of the water. Good luck, Harry, she thinks. You need something good for this. We could get more. We've got him talking. The lieutenant uses the opportunity to tell you in a lowered voice. Who knows what he's seen and done over the years. You could get more out of him. He likes talking. Been looking at anything else you haven't liked? A tragic comedy. He Trades, prostitutes, and rentiers. Uh, more specifically? Specifically, the whole city is a charnel house. Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez... He shakes his head in disgust. Martinez is the worst. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is a racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world. Listening to race-themed radio shows. In the ruins. In their lorries. He points in land. Pump full of steroids and Radio Revachal 92. Race this. Race that. 
It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Mr. Clare? Yes, the fly larva in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippe III, a syphilitic murderer on the town square, to spit on the working class. Anything more? Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus as history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachol at least pretends to rebuild. These people still live in ruins. Intense, like animals, like those boom-boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. He keeps shaking his head with sorrow from the sight he missed. That all? The worst of them is the blood-drenched Sucreon on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now. Her gun-toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, no. The worst is that old cock parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins, too. Every morning he's there, while the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozon, or Quayamoran, or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. Say nothing. That's all the rich really want. Sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain, it's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frisell is now dead. Just not. We did good when we pushed him under that horse car. If only in the 30s, those Disco whores. <laughs> what follows is ominous mumbling. You cannot make out a single word. The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language <laughs> center, leaving only a nonsensical sputter. There was something about a statue and nihilistic advertising agency people might be worth investigating. By cock parading in his colourful uniform, you mean Rene? Every fucking morning for 34 years. Throwing that ball. One ball against the other. I've always loathed that game. That is not a working class game. I don't care what they say on Radio June. He grinds his teeth in rage. Royalist ghouls played like it was life itself. Click, clack across the water each day. And that uniform, like a parrot plumage. I won't even mention that he's a traitor to his race. A patank maniac race traitor. Just nod. I remember him. I remember him from La Noce. Not him, personally. His make and model. There were tens of thousands of them. I thought we took them all out before the Liberals came to their rescue. We missed one, that one. With a shaky finger, he points the city toward the crater near the plaza where a lonely pine tree stands. There doesn't seem to be a single person under the pine today. Not even Gaston, alone. There's no one there. Fat and plump, like a pheasant just begging to be popped off. Please, Mr. Truss, shoot me. You'd like to kill him? Not yet. I like to look at him strut around, place the crosshair on his medals, right on his face, and just fiddle the trigger. Think about it. Let the bonbon melt in my mouth. Save the treat for later. The lieutenant asks cheerfully. He is a juicy bonbon, that one. A real treat for the black day, the blackest. When I put that gun in my own mouth, I think, no, 
Don't waste it. Put this lead in that cock, René. For the boys he killed. And then I look at him throw those balls, and I suddenly feel... He lets, lets out a wistful sigh. Better. I even hid one bullet, so I'd always have one for him. The lines on his face... Haven't seen straighten. him around lately, strutting around. Must be down with arthritis. I okay. hope it hurts like hell. I hope he sweats blood. Hearing it may destabilize him. Are you sure you've gotten everything from him? Mm, no. Uh, tell me something else, Mr. Drop. <laughs> yes, of course. He must be past the kidney stone. I hope it's excruciating. At least it keeps him from throwing his balls. He seems relieved. Could he have been worried for him? He reminds him of himself. The same hatred. The same. He tried to think of another thing, but no. It's just the hatred. There was something about the statue on the roundabout and syphilis. Syphilis is a disease Philip III contracted in a whorehouse. The statue is an abomination. Abomination? The bacteria entered his brain and made him squander trillions on sparkling wine, cocaineum, and monuments of himself. His son, Philip IV, the insane, contracted syphilis in the womb. He breathes in with a wheeze of hatred. That is technically possible, although Philip III was not actually syphilitic. He was just mad. And he still went on to govern Revachol for 25 years. We lost two million lives toppling that mode of government. And those grotesque statues, too. Hundreds of them. But it's still there. What a keen remark. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's still there. Do you know why? Because cynical advertising yuppies erected a deconstructed version of it. That's right. Some advertising cockroaches erected a cynical deconstruction of it. That's what I said. We tore it down with honest working-class plastic explosives. And there it is again. He shakes his head in disgust. Art is a bourgeois establishment. It's an affront to humanity. Every gallery should be bulldozed, and the artists should all be given 30 years of hard labor in Yekokata. Hey, don't shit on the artists, man. Disco... Horse? Horse. Yeah. It's all he says. Even that word has to be pushed through his teeth with great force. The rage seeds too hard. You mentioned the union is social democratic and Mr. Clare a farce of a social democratic. Another hideous disappointment. He pokes the ash. Unions are the real enemy. The true enemy of the proletariat placating the masses. Disappointment. So personal. He displays a familiarity with the union's top brass. Who's the disappointment, Everett Clare? That deformed toad. I wouldn't expect him to wipe his own ass. I mean, the brains of the operation. The smart one. Edgar. You mean Edgar, Everett's brother? <laughs> He talks a big game about uprising and social base. They must have sent the smart one to some university in Le Jardin, where it's alienation this and hegemony that. You've talked to Edgar? First against the war with him. He's stopped poking at the ash now, just shakes his head. The Clares wouldn't miss a man hidden in their own backyard. Not all this time. Nothing happens in Martinez without them knowing. Of course. Maybe the clears asked him to. Ooh. Don't go straight for the kill. Exhaust everything else first. Uh, Soften him up. Have you approached them? I haven't approached anyone. I hid. It was Edgar who came to me. How did he know you were here? He didn't just stumble in like an oaf. He figured it out. 
Some kids told him about a monster on the island. I told you, he has brains. He points to the path leading to the tower. Stepped right off the boat and walked down where you came. I even kept the door open for him. Thought he was a man of the left. Wouldn't rat me out. I was right about one of those things. Mm, when was that? Twenty years ago. Twenty years? Neither of them could walk now, could they? They were less fat then. That's around the time the clears came to power. What did you talk about? Edgar did the talking. Paid his respects like I were a fossil in a uniform. Offered platitudes about the struggle. Flaunted his pink degree. Even quoted Marzov. Never trust a social democrat who quotes Marzov. Oh, and charity too. They love their charity. Offered me blankets and social housing. I still have the gas cooker he brought. And he let you be here? Let me be here? The ZOC is an unlawful successor of the commune of Revachol. We took this fortification from the loyalists. Even the Clares understand this. They let him be here. Understanding was a courtesy. But why such a courtesy? Mr. Dross, did you kill the Cronell mercenary for the Clares to incite a riot? You know why I killed that fucker, Dwat. He shakes his head. As to Edgar, I'm not doing anything for that swine again. Again? What have you done for Edgar before? Try teaching him some Marzovian socioeconomics. They didn't stick. We parted ways. He coughs. <laughs> okay, he didn't do the hanged man for them. But he's insinuating something. Okay. Let's try and logic this. What was the deal between him and Edgar? Come on. It's important, man. The connection comes to you like a splash of cold water. Dark, cold water. Twenty years ago, when you met Edgar, the Clares didn't run the union yet, did they? <laughs> a sputter from the old man. He acknowledges it. Here we go. A twist behind the dark bend. Who did? That bourgeois cow. Tiffin Holly was her name. He narrows his Licked eyes. the rich man's hand every time he came to town. Never seen a Labour leader so hot on mutual cooperation. And money. She liked that too. That Holly was a real bridge builder and a deal maker. His eyes glisten suddenly with hatred. She's also a woman, wasn't she? Just like that class. Yeah. She was. And she was real soft on those money men. Had a Barbara Muscova bag over her shoulder that she liked to bring to work. And then she just disappeared. Called in, they say. On the eve of battle, ran away. Vanished like a piss stain. He squints and smiles at the black logs. No, that's not quite it, is it? Did she? They say her daughter called in, not her personally. But that wasn't really her daughter, was it? No, I guess it was not. You could swear you could see the embers glow again under his eyes on the dust. Edgar had someone make the call. Why is that, Mr. Dross? She couldn't make the call herself. Here it is, the bend in the river. Why? Because she was dead. Just say nothing. Say nothing. The cow caught a bullet in her right lung, fell into the canal grasping her tit and drowned. Or bled? Hard to say. It was a sloppy job and a moving target. She was going home, waddling, dressed in yellow, drunk like she often was. The ruins were black around her and she had a yellow leather bag under her arm. She tried to cross the canal. Heading home to Grand Coron or Betancourt, some place like that, where they build those new batements for the people who flourish in the hell around her and the ruins. You shot her? Someone shot her. Or you maybe shot. the cow just fell. My memory is full of holes. All I know is nothing changed. Not in the material base, not in the hegemony. There was no uprising, just words. The Union fizzled, sogged. Nothing came of it. Nothing. 
Edgar didn't keep his part of the deal. <laughs> A spotter again, nothing more. If you were to testify to this, give the RCM something on Edgar, you could walk. The lieutenant says in a voice even calmer, as if it were nothing at all. We would strike everything you've done and process you as a POW. You were in a war. You were on assignment. We could even extradite you to the Samaran People's Republic. A degenerate worker state. Goat shit. No, thank you. I'm Reva Sholian. My days are short. I will rot away here. In a moral intern cell. I will not testify to anything. He coughs. <coughs> but you did do it. I saw it happen, and I liked it. That's all I have to say. I didn't live and fight for 40 years to end up as a collaborationist. I've heard it on Channel 8, 40 AM, Radio Revachal, late night. Everyone is a blobber in this world. Everyone betrays everyone. They're all already locked up for betrayal. The best ones, the ones with heart, were slaughtered, trampled. He looks to the city. The same old freezing hatred. There is plenty here to work with once he's in custody. Okay. And the lieutenant knows it. He gives you a little nod to proceed. Mm. You know that yes. Rene. Where is he? I hope he doesn't have debilitating arthritis. Or kidney stones. He can still come out to play with balls and get shot in the head, right? Oh my God, he's even worried for him. Rene is dead, died of old age a couple of days ago. No. Yes. I waited too long. I waited too long and now he's dead? The old communard looks at you, his blackberry eyes shaking in disbelief. I'm sorry, Mr. Dras. I understand you knew him for a long time. <laughs> They're all dead now. Fuck it. He just shakes his head. If he really wanted to kill him so bad, he would have done. There must have been a thousand black days on these islands. His health ailing. You had a thousand chances to kill him. And I blew them all. What does it matter now? He's gone. Ancient dust. He reminded him of himself. The same hatred. The same. You try to think of something else, but no, it's just hatred. You cared about him. All human beings care about each other. I cared for seeing his head explode. Now, God damn this world. I'm sorry. Fuck you. The old communard says, staring at the ground, seemingly to the island you're on. You okay, Mr. Dross, to go on? You think I haven't seen people die? It's all I've seen them do. Fuck and die. All the other plans we had. To love. To colonize the pale. It's all fucked. He's not okay. This is just another black day in a row of black days. Something strange is keeping him together, mm. making him endure. I'm glad we talked about this now. Glad we talked about what? <laughs> mm. Assess his body. Assess his body language. What strikes you about this gaunt man is not the stomach pain, or the cough, or the malnutrition. For a man who spent 44 years hidden in the urban wild... He's surprisingly okay. Indeed. He speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. Animated by what? It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures. Thought processes cut off like threads as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system. Great leaps of emotion, from anger to grief, despair. Dementia? You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, yet different. When his thoughts move, they are lucid. 
keen even, not senile. Wouldn't a foul temper be a byproduct of his life? Perhaps, but his seems more than that. The inner turmoil takes unexpected turns, as if forced on him in a way. In summary, you sense some underlying neurological disorder. Mr. Dross, are you okay? How is your memory? No, I'm not okay. I shit blood and I'm surrounded by insane people. He waves his hand, chasing something that's not there. There it is again. Erratic hand motions, bouts of rage, and the stomach thing too, of course. I think I've just about covered everything. His lip curls yeah. into a sneer. Glad we talked about what? Okay. Iosef Lilian Novich Dross, you're under arrest for the murder of Ellis Cortenier. What? The old but you man's said I would be eyes taken to the. Fill with sudden unexpected terror at the words. This terror is the sum of all the uncontrollable movements and mood swings he's been exhibiting. Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? Do you understand? But... Do you want... Uh, Kim, he's afraid. No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He looks at the reeds, eyes submerged in glowing terror. He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Now on to the boat. Ooh. There it is again, to your north, as it has been since you came to the coast. The reeds whisper, stalks rubbing against each other, but then, in the middle of it... What? Something completely different. It sounds like a bow, very slowly being drawn against the strings of a violin. A very small violin, made of reeds and rushes. Maybe there is room for three on the boat. Hush, Kim. Do you hear it? What? What are you talking about? Is this... The old man's really voice drops us? in a sudden gust of wind. Your skin crawls. Whoa, what's happening? What is that? What is this? A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb. To then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. Ah, uh, that's a bit bigger than we thought it was going to be. Blink. It's still there. An unfolding mechanism of reed-like chitin hovering in place. What is that? Point to it. What are you talking about? <laughs> the old man looks at the reeds, then at you. The giant stick insect. There's nothing there. He looks confused. The stick insect is over three meters tall. Whoa. It looks straight at you yeah, with it its is. tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun hand rise instinctively. There it is. I see it. Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reed. Kim, can you see it? I can see it. Four simple words, thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. But that means it's really there. It's really spinning there. Spinning slowly, in absolute silence. Its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. The lieutenant whispers then takes a step towards the giant arthropod. Whoa, dude. It's clear you like the hard stuff, Brota. Really? Again? No, no. 
When the blood and flesh call, mm -hmm. there is no discard in them. Speak true. Do you like the hard stuff? What is the hard stuff? Fascism, Brota. Okay. You're going to keep your vus, right? No, I'm going to keep your vus, Brota. Thank you very much. There's a slow, painful growl somewhere in your intestines, knocking on your alcohol engorged liver. It is one of betrayal and disappointment. Um, I, I really, my brain really wants me to do fascism, doesn't it? What the hell is this? I think that maybe we should find out next time on Let's Play Disco Elysium. Thank you for watching. If you'd be so kind, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you're so inclined, drop by the Patreon. Thank you for watching and farewell. Thank you to my epic patrons who make videos like these possible. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more, don't forget to subscribe.